This is Whistler, the biggest ski resort in Canada, and as well as hosting the 2010 Winter Olympics, it's home to some of the best snow sports athletes on the planet. This is Abby. She doesn't like the cold. In fact, she spent almost her entire life looking to get as far away from the cold as geographically possible. Given the choice, she would spend her entire life in a bikini, and in her opinion, the only thing worse than cold toes is carrying skis. The real question is, can they mix? Can a beginner really ski in Whistler? Now for the good news. Abby has actually skied before. Once. How the hell do you think we're going to get off this? But the bad news. No, I don't want to go. I don't, I don't want to go anymore. I'm scared. Snow, snow five, snow five, snow five. <laughs> <laughs> Here right, here's your stick. It's called a pole, by the way. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to help me get out of it. Snow plow, snow plow, snow plow. But despite this skiing success, I still had to get to the slopes first, and that means carrying skis. Okay, so. <laughs> so, first day skiing in Whistler today. And as you can see, I don't even know how to carry the skis, let alone how to go on them, on the sides of a mountain. But uh, it's all good fun, eh? So we are making our way with all of our stuff up to the slopes. Gonna try out some beginner slopes first. I'm very, very nervous. I hate carrying this stuff. But um, yeah, I'm excited and I'm sure it's gonna be a good day. Fortunately, it didn't take long for me to find a solution to my ski carrying problem. After a short walk through the snowy village of Whistler, we got in the gondola in search of the dedicated area for new skiers. Okay, so the good news is we found the beginner's area. The bad news is it's, uh, it's, it's down there. Uh, I think we were supposed to get off to that last lift and, well, we didn't. Oh no, it looks <laughs> like it's going up so high. <laughs> there better be some sort of green runs up here or something. Okay, I guess it's the, uh, the deep end for Abby. See how it goes. <laughs> but despite this minor setback, we were excited and ready to go. But it wasn't long before I started to get the hang of all this skiing nonsense and we made it down to the beginner's area unscathed. Okay, so we have come down to the beginner's section on Blackcomb Mountain and it does look a lot easier than the bit that we just done. <laughs> They have like really slow moving chair lifts, so it's really easy to practice on. Um, behind me, they have ski lessons, so you can pay to get like group lessons or individual lessons. And it is adults as well as children. It's not just like a kid's park where you come and learn. Um, so yeah, I definitely would recommend getting off at the first stop if you're coming here to learn, not going all the way to the top of the mountain straight off the bat, because it's definitely more difficult. As I'm sure you will see me um, falling over up the top of the mountain already but um yeah it seems like a perfect place to come and learn to ski Uh, 
tell you what, it's hard not to get nervous watching Abby on the skis. <laughs> Especially in these early stages where there's a lot of like falling and tumbling and spilling, but I'm just not used to watching her doing like hobbies where she could potentially get hurt, but she's all wrapped up and stuff and the snow's not too hard and yeah, just takes some getting used to. Between both Whistler and Blackhole Mountain, the resort has over 200 runs and around 35% of them are green beginner runs. So if you're looking to keep things easy, Whistler has loads of options. We stopped off at the Rendezvous Mountain Cafe for a coffee, which wasn't cheap, but if you bought an Epic Pass ticket, it does save you 20%. If you're coming for the day, you can pick up a day pass for between 160 to 190 Canadian dollars. But if you're looking to ski for more than eight days or so, we would recommend considering an epic season pass. This costs around $1,300 per person and gives you access to the other resorts around the world. There are also lessons available, which can be booked for around 299 Canadian dollars for a full day beginner to novice course, or $179 for a half day beginner ski lesson. In terms of gear, there are loads of places to rent equipment, but it's not exactly cheap either, at around $64 for a day for all your ski gear. We spent the afternoon exploring the two mountains and practicing on the beginner runs before heading to one of the many bars at the top of the village for a well-earned beer. Okay, on to like some of the skiing, I guess, a little bit. Um, so for me, I guess, the first thing that I would notice is that since Canada and well, Whistler is such an expensive resort to learn, if you've never skied before, for me personally, I would probably rather go somewhere like Poland or Bulgaria or uh, one of these places in Europe that's super cheap. I mean, like for ski rental, for example, it was literally seven pounds in ski rental in Poland. We went to learn in Zakopane. Yeah. Um, and it was like 15 pounds for like four hours worth of skiing. Whereas here it's probably like more than 10 times that price. So if you've never skied and you know that you're just gonna spend most of your first day falling over, you know, really just learning the basics. I would probably rather just go somewhere like there, especially if, you know, money is important or you're on a budget. You know, maybe that's not the case if money is no object to you and you're coming here anyway and you, and you don't care about spending the money, then, then great. I mean, Whistler has some of the best facilities in the world. But if you are on a budget, that's something that I would at least take into consideration. Okay, now let's get in the hot tub. It's freezing. <laughs> So one last tip for you guys is if you do come to Whistler, I totally recommend getting a hot tub because my legs are dying after a full day skiing. I think maybe it's worse if you're a beginner, I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely a top tip if you can get a hot tub. Okay, so we are actually in Whistler for another three weeks. So if you're coming to Whistler or maybe you just enjoy watching the videos, then feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out because we've got some other adventures coming. So we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Next week, we find ourselves in deep snow as we head into the Canadian wilderness in search of the famous Keyhole Hot Springs. <laughs>